So two down to the ninth place hitter and Johan Rojas, who's playing center field this afternoon. All right, I think I got everything together. From the windup, here's the pitch. A curveball strike, and the count's on one. And that slider from Chris Sale has always been wicked, and I've known that from his days on the south side with the White Sox. 30 pitches he's thrown so far with two out here in the bottom of the second and a 2-1 Atlanta lead. Here goes that sneeze again. He one one on the way. Swinging a pop-up foul on the council in two. Excuse me a moment. Johan Rojas last year hit 302, two homers. He drove in 23. Chris Sale's not the answer for the Braves. I never understand why we picked him up. I don't understand either because he's been damaged goods for the longest time. Since he won that World Series with the Red Sox, he hasn't done much. Counts 0-2. Two. two down, two on. Be a crime if the Phillies didn't get a chance if the Phillies didn't push the tying run across. Chris Sale has been damaged goods. Honestly, since his day is with the White Sox because of his throwing motion. Rojas back in the batter's box. Sale settles on the mound. Looks in, gets his sign from Trump, and now comes to the low set position. A double glance to second, and the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. So after allowing a walk and a hit, nothing for Philadelphia. No runs, a hit, no errors, and two left. We go to the top of the third. It's Atlanta 2 and Philadelphia 1. to the top of the third and JJ's mad at me because there were a couple of things I didn't include and in, did not include in my overlay so I am going to fix that right now while we're waiting to come back from a break this copyrighted broadcast presented by authority of play by play with JJ and snowman multimedia intended solely for the private use of its order private use of its audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or any of the use of the accounts and descriptions of this here broadcast without the express written consent of Snowman Multimedia and play-by-play -play with JJ is strictly prohibited. To the top of the third we go, and Chad Trump will lead things off against Ranger Suarez in a 2-1 game. And the pitch to Trump is grounded foul for strike one. Thompson is sending Stott and Marsh versus the lefty, but why Sid Bohm too? That one's outside, and the count's now even one and one. We're in the top of the third. Two runs, one hit for Atlanta. A run on two hits for Philadelphia. The wine and the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, and the count's one and two. And no spoilers in the chat, and... When J.J.'s mad, he turns green. <laughs> no, he turns red. <laughs> One, two pitch. Curveball low and outside, and the count's even at two and two. I'm going to find a way to get that, to get his logo up there. 
Hmm. They realize this is serious, so they're saving him for other opponents. Here's a swing and a miss and another strikeout for Ranger Suarez as we begin the third. That gives him four on the afternoon. And we're back to the top of the order. And Ronald Acuna Jr., who drew a walk and scored a run back in the first. There's a secret weapon that I got to get. Here's the first one to Acuna. It's a strike, and the count's on one. You see the upcoming streams for Snowman Multimedia on the right side. The right side. I didn't get this schedule for JJ, but I will tell you he will be on tonight at 6 o'clock for the Raptors and the Sixers. That fastball's high and tight, and the count's even one and one. JJ, I hope I got that right. One ball, one strike, one down here in the top of the third. And the pitch on the way is swung on and fouled out of play by Acuna. And the count's one and two. One and two, the count. The pitch on the way is a fastball. Strike three called. Acuna doesn't believe it. Five strikeouts now. For Ranger Suarez, after allowing that two-run homer back in the first. And to my esteemed host, J.J., who was allowing me to do this, I hope I got the information right. And the next time I sit in for him, there's a logo I need to include, which I will. And Acuna doesn't believe that he struck out. Here's the first pitch to Albies, and he swung on and swings and slashes it foul out of play for strike one. <gasps> I got it. I got it. I got you, JJ. Y'all going to see a lot of moving parts here. I'm just warning you. Next one, high and tight. Counts even one and one. Okay, there's my subscribe button. And JJ, I need a favor. If you're listening, I want you to send me your logo again. Swing and a miss, and the count's one and two. One and two, two down, top of the third, 2-1 Atlanta. Suarez is ready from the chest time wine. Here it comes, high and tight, and the count's even. And I think I got everything situated now. 2-2 two -two pitch, swing a bouncing ball over... Suarez to second. Merrifield tossed to first is in time. Make it nine in a row. Retired by Ranger Suarez to the bottom of the third. Atlanta two. Philadelphia one.
bottom of the third inning, two to one in favor of the Atlanta Braves. And Chris Sale is on for his third inning of work. And it's Kyle Schwarber that'll lead things off, and he's the reason it's a two to one ball game. First pitch to Schwarbs is a strike, and the count's on one with a cutter. Ball one to Schwarber outside, and the count's even one and one with a slider. Two to one Atlanta, top of the third. Schwarber hit 47 homers and drove in 104 last year. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouled off the plate, and the count is 1-2. and two. GB, I beg your pardon. GB is with us. Thanks for stopping by, and I think I already know how I can improve my layout here, especially when I sit in for JJ. So, JJ, I apologize for not consulting you on a couple of things. Next one. Strike three called, and Schwarber knew it. Fourth strikeout for Chris Sale, and we're locked into a pitcher's duel. And here's Trey Turner. Turner struck out swinging his first time up. Man, that salad. <clears throat> Man, that salad my wife fixed me was absolutely awesome. South Carolina continues to lead Oregon State in the women's elite eight as Turner slashes that one foul off to the right, and the count's on one. Do me a favor, folks. Subscribe to both of our channels so you'll know when JJ goes live next, which will be tonight at 6, and when I go live next, which will be tomorrow at 7 for the Women's Elite 8. Next one, swinging a high fly ball into left field, pass giving chase toward the line, and that will be out of play. And the count's on two. See, JJ's got weapons that I don't have. I got to get all that together, and I think I'll use. I think I, I think I'll put a couple playlists together, and use the same thing that JJ that JJ uses with his permission, of course. One ball, two strikes. We're in the bottom of the third, and that is I. I read the wrong screen. It's one and two. I got ahead of myself. One ball, two strikes. One out. Nobody on. And the one, two. Swinging a smash to third. The toss to first is in time by Riley. And there's two down in the inning. Five in a row retired by Chris Sale after the walk and the single in the bottom of the second. And Oregon State has climbed within two. We'll keep our eye on that. That was a great scoop by Riley at third and had plenty of time to get Trey Turner. Alec Bohm lined out to lined out to Riley at third his first time up. And the pitch fouled back and the count's on one. Riley has my vote for Golden Glove this year, says GB. You know what? I'm not I'm not inclined to argue. 0-1-1 the count. Chris Sale works to Alec Bohm, and the pitch on the way is high. And the count's even 1-1. One and one. <laughs> Phillies have left two. Atlanta has left none. As we work here in the bottom of the third, as Sale kicks and fires. Slashed foul out of play by Alec Bohm, and the count... Stays where it is at one at uh, well the count is now one and two I beg your pardon. Michael Jack Schmidt, in the immortal words of Harry Callis, is in the booth with the guys today. Tom McCarthy and John Crook. Or next one that's outside and it's two and two. Or as one of my favorite broadcasters, Chris Berman, says best. John, I am not a crook. And I borrowed the daylight side of that name for a young lady I covered at Marquette Catholic. Tell you about her in a minute. Strike three called, inning over. 
So Sale gets two strikeouts. He's retired six in a row. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Phillies have stranded two through three. We go to the fourth. Atlanta two, Philadelphia one. We head to the top of the four. Three, four, and five due for the Braves. Austin Riley, Matt Olson, and Marcel Ozuna. As it's two to one Atlanta here in the top of the fourth. And Austin Riley slashes one foul to the right, and the count's on one. My name is Brian Snow. I'm sitting in for Jason Joseph. And for those of you tuning in via play by play with JJ, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make a donation to JJ's cause. 0-1, swung on, fouled out of play, and the count's 0-2. For those of you tuning in via Snowman Multimedia, I thank you for that. Hit and the same thing, hit the like, hit the subscribe, make a donation via Cash App if you want to help the Snowman and his family out. 0-2 the count. A wine in the 0-2 pitch. A curveball is whacked on the ground and fair down the left field line. That'll head into the corner. Rounding first is Riley. He heads into second with a stand-up double to start the, thir- start the fourth inning. Second hit for Atlanta, and both of them are extra base hits. This double and the home run back in the first. And Riley came through the, came through the zone and... And Mundo Sosa was playing too far off the line, and Riley took it down the line. So with a runner in scoring position and nobody out, that'll bring Matt Olson to the plate. Lefty versus lefty. And the pitch. Swinging a f- miss. Swinging a foul, I beg your pardon, and the count's 0-1. Swinging and missed. Oh, I hear CSI in the background. That's what my wife's watching. I love that show. Next one, swing and a miss, and the count's on two. <clears throat> How do I know that? I hear the I hear the Who in the background. It's one of my favorite songs. I surprised her one night when she was watching. I think it was um, CSI Miami. That's low and outside, and the count's one and two. Wife was watching CSI Miami one night. And didn't hear anything from me. I was half asleep, and all of a sudden I hear the familiar theme song, Won't Get Fooled Again, and I started singing it. Had her laughing in the process. Pitched to Olsen is low, and it's two and two. Thompson's lineup has eight righties versus a lefty, and the lefty hit a home run. Eh, go figure. Go figure. And the lefty was Kyle Schwarber. Runner at second, nobody out, top of the fourth. Two and two on Matt Olson. The lefty is ready, and the pitch on the way. Swing and a foul. We'll do it again. B 
Be sure to continue to interact with us and leave your thoughts in the chat. I will continue to read them aloud as the fans start getting louder at Citizens Bank Park. 2-1 to one Atlanta, top of the fourth. Suarez is ready, comes to the high set, and the pitch on the way is low, and the count's full 3-2. and two. I don't like the platoons benching good hitters. I don't either. See, I wouldn't be I wouldn't like being a manager because I would play a lot of hunches. I would just play a little I would just play a lot of hunches. <clears throat> Pardon me. The payoff. Strike three called, one down in the fourth. Olsen knew it. He struck out for the second time. And Rio Muto had it right there, and Suarez put it right there, 94 miles an hour with a fastball, and Olsen knew it. Marcelo Zuna now stands in. He grounded to short his first time up. He had 40 home runs and drove in 100 last year. First one outside with a sinker, and the count's on one. Hunches are out, analytics are in, unfortunately. Not for me. I I play more I would play more hunches than analytics. Analytics don't mean a doggone thing to me. I'll have to talk about that tomorrow. 1-0, swing and a miss and the count's even 1 and 1. I mean, if you're a left-handed if you're facing a left-handed pitcher, wouldn't you want to have as many lefties in the lineup as possible? Just to cross him up. 61 pitches now for Ranger Suarez or as many righties in the in the lineup. 1-1, one, one, slash foul out of play to the right. The count's 1-2. and two. And the thing that I'm, see- I'm seeing with Suarez, as I mentioned, his out pitch is the sinker, but he's using the sinker today at least, and y'all tell me if I'm wrong, if I, if I saw this wrong, as his lead pitch instead of his out pitch. 1-2 and two the count. The 1-2, a slash foul out of play to the right, and we'll do it again. One out, one on, top of the fourth. Atlanta 2, Philadelphia 1. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Ozuna back in the box. Riley leads away from second. One out, top of the fourth. Suarez is ready. He comes set at the chest, and the pitch on the way. Slashed foul out of play to the right, and we'll do it again. Every time Suarez has come with a fastball... Ozuna's been on it. 301 left in the third in Albany, and South Carolina leads Oregon State by 10, 51 to 41. One two pitch, high and tight with a sinker, and it counts even two and two. Doesn't matter, the Phil swing at everything. Yeah, that's true. In the times I've watched them, they have. And they continue to. There's the problem. No patient hitting. I say that about my White Sox all the time. Swinging a bouncing ball to Turner. He spins. He throws. He got him. Two down in the inning. Great play by Trey Turner. As Riley retreated back to second base. So two down to Adam Duvall. And the Phillies with a chance to escape without allowing a run. And the pitch to Duvall is outside. Ball one. If there's any way I can make this better for my channel or for his, y'all let me know in the chat because I want to improve this not just for me or for JJ, but for everyone who does this. I want to bring a bit of professionalism to the booth. Next one, swing in a foul out of play to the right, and the count's even one and one. Analytics are a useful tool, but you can't use them blindly. You're right, you can't, and I don't. I don't. Duvall in his 11th season has hit 184 home runs total with 538 driven in. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing a foul, and the count's 1-2. and two. I, I wanted to break out my, my, my headset, my microphone headset, but I kind of like this. This gives me the feel of um, John Sterling does this with the Yankees, and I know a couple of others do it. I like this. I, I like this better. But we'll see. I'll try it with the headset on Wednesday. One 
One, two. It's fastball inside, and the count's two and two. Prince Monito, shout to the wifey. Hope everyone is having a great Easter. We are. Kind of a lazy Easter for us. You know, got some things done got some things done around the house. My wife's enjoying her TV and I'm enjoying some baseball. Two two pitch is high and and that counts now full at three and two. I gotta work on getting my chops better and calling a baseball game. Seventy pitches now for Ranger Suarez and he's only pitched three and two thirds. And to talk to seriously Larry, I don't like analytics. The payoff swung on and popped up foul. We'll do it again. Lazy Sunday baseball. Better believe it. Better believe it. <clears throat> Promised my wife that she ha could have a lazy weekend. And I'm going to do everything I can to fulfill that promise, to uh, make sure I keep that promise. Three and two of the counters. Ranger Suarez steps off the mound. And Adam Duvall steps back into the batter's box. Two down, one on. A leadoff double by Austin Riley. He remains at second with two out. Ranger Suarez looks in to JT, gets his sign. <clears throat> and now comes to the high set, a glance to second, and the pitch on the way is lined in the left field, and that's going to get down for a base hit, and that'll split the gap, and that'll bring a run home. On his way to second is Adam Duvall. He's in with a sliding double, and it's 3-1 to one Atlanta. And there you go. Two out runs. Two of the most basic things. Two out runs. And manufactured runs. That's the third extra base hit for Atlanta. Two doubles this inning. A home run in the first. So Riley with a double in the fourth to lead off the inning. And Adam Duvall comes through with a two-out double. To drive in a run. Three to one Atlanta. <clears throat> Excuse me. Glad to have Duball back where he belongs. Yeah. And now they're taking a look at second to see if Duvall overslid. Tagged the bag. They tagged him. One more frame. He's out. He is out. Merriweather tagged him before his hand reached the base. Right there, he's out. This should be the end of the inning, and I'm looking at the replay right now. They're going to the replay, and they're challenging it. Adam Duvall is out. So if that's the case, if the call comes in and that he, and that he is out, the run will count. Back foot stayed on the bag. Back foot stayed on the bag, GB. Did I miss that? Yeah, they're looking at it now. Hardcore for all. If you guys remember last season, the Braves for the longest was the only plus team in the division. The Braves are who they were. Yeah. Yeah, they're taking a look at the they're taking a look at the replay. He is out. He is out. The inning is over. So Duvall gets a single instead of a double. He gets a run batted in, and he is out trying to stretch it to second. And that play goes 7-6. And Duvall's trying to figure out what just happened. But I was looking at the I was looking at the tag on on the hand. I hope to see another replay because GB says that they that he um his foot remained on the bag. We'll sort it out when you all get back. 3-1 Atlanta. We'll be back.
Call was overturned to end the inning. Oops. I don't have the pictures up in front of me. Now I do. 3-1 to one Atlanta as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. So instead of a double, it's a single for DeBall, plus a run batted in. Make it a run on two hits, does Atlanta. And a slider begins the inning with a strike to JT Rio Muto. So they get a run on a hit, and no one left. Next one is a strike, and the count's on two. Danny Holcomb in the house. Do you ever call the Reds games? It depends, Danny. It depends on the day and the and the time. Gotta make, gotta make sure I keep up with daddy duty here. 0-2. Oh, Way high and outside. Y'all remember John Crook batting um, with his helmet backwards in the All-Star game in Baltimore against Randy Johnson? That's what that, that's what that reminds me of. Kings and Jazz at 8, at uh, 9 Eastern time in Utah. Next one. Swing and a miss, and that's that. One down in the fourth as JT Riamuto is now 0 for 2 on the day. Six strikeouts now for Chris Sale. As Bryce Harper, we're looking at a play from yesterday. Harper caught it and then took a tumble right into the dugout. I'll never forget that crook at bat. Me neither. First one to Castellanos is a ball inside, and the count's 1-0. and I would do the same thing. Ain't no way I want to see a 100-mile-an-hour fastball from um, Randy Johnson or Nolan Ryan. 1-0, sidearm, swing and a miss, and the count's even at 1-1. One one. Chris Sale has always had this funky delivery where it looks like he's going to come sidearm, but then with his shoulder angle, it's a three-quarter type angle, but doesn't completely go over the top either. Next one, swing and a miss on a slider. And the count's one and two, and Sale seems to be in control. The one arm spinning at bat. Yep, that would be me. That would be me. I'm just saying. That would totally be me. One and two the count. With one out and nobody on in the fourth. One, two pitch. Low, and the count's even two and two. But would you all want to face that kind of heat? In the batter's box? I certainly wouldn't. Not a chance. Not a chance. And the injury for Sale has been always been on that rotator cuff, on that on that left arm. Next one. Swinging a shot, base hit in the left field. That'll split the gap. Cutting it off is Duvall. He turns and throws towards second and out. That's one where you have to stay put, Castellanos. So a hit turns into a 7-4 put out and two down in the inning. And looking at that, Castellanos needed to take off right off the bat, and then he, he stumbled a little bit around first, and he didn't. Well, I'm not going to say he didn't hustle it out because he turned on the juices, but it was well after he turned the corner at first base. So two out, nobody on to Whit Merrifield, and he fouls one back for strike one. Oh, my goodness. Castellanos was safe. Did I look at that one wrong? The 0-1, swinging a high fly ball into right field. Going back is Acuna in front of the warning track. He makes the catch, and the inning is over. So a single almost turned double turns into an out with a questionable call. And we go to the top of the fifth. Atlanta 3, Philadelphia 1.
to the top of the fifth, and Castellanos should have protested that last call because it had a chance to take a look at it, and he was safe. He was ab- he was absolutely safe, but they didn't protest the call. So the call stands. We go to the fifth, and it's 0-1 to Harris, and he swings and misses, and it's 0-2. 7-8-9 and due for the Braves. Harris, Acuna, and Trump. With the Braves leading 3-1, each team has three hits. 0-2 the count. The wind and the 0-2 pitch. A swing and a bouncer headed to second. Up with it, Merrifield. Tossed to first. One up, one down in the fifth. One up, one down here in the fifth inning. And the eighth place center, Orlando Arcia, who's 0 for 1. He grounded to third his first time up. <clears throat> is up for the second time today. The pitch to Orlando was outside with a changeup for ball one. Suarez, four and a third, has thrown 77 pitches. And after four, Sale has thrown only fi- thrown only 56. Next one, way outside, and it's 2-0. and oh. And I agree, Castellanos, with only one out in the inning, should have stayed at first. Should have stayed put. Because you want to start a rally, not kill one. 2-0 pitch. Swing and a bouncer foul, and it's 2-1. They've gone to the fourth quarter in Albany, and South Carolina looks to remain undefeated. They're up 12 on the Oregon State Beavers, 58-46. to Tomorrow we'll have the second part of the Albany Regional. We'll have that championship. Next one, swing a high pop-up foul out of play to the right. We'll do it again. And the count's even at two and two. Tomorrow, it's Iowa, it's LSU, it's the rematch with a spot in the final four on the line, and I'll have that call beginning at 7 p.m. Bulls and Timberwolves will play later. They'll play at 6 o'clock. Swing and a miss, and that's that. Two down in the inning. And for Ranger Suarez, that is seven strikeouts. Received a hundred messages today with the restream. Oh, cool! I like I I like restream. I'll talk about it later. Two up, two down, to Chad with Trump, and he takes a curveball strike in the count's on one. Trump struck out his first time up, back in the third. The kick in the 0-1. A fastball outside, and the count's even one and one. One ball, one strike to count. And the pitch on the way. A swing and a high fly ball headed to right. Castellanos giving chase right in front of the track. He makes the catch, and the inning is over. Nine out of ten retired by Ranger Suarez. The problem is... The Phillies trail by two, three to one, and we will be right back.
right, here we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Three to one in favor of the Atlanta Braves. I want to thank everyone tuning in. This is Play by Play with JJ. My name is Brian Snow. I'm sitting in for JJ this afternoon. And for those of you tuning in via, via Snowman Multimedia, as I did have permission to dual cast it, thank you there. Three run, three hits, no errors for Atlanta. A run on three hits and no errors for Philadelphia. JJ will be live tonight at 6 p.m. for the Raptors and the Philadelphia 76ers, and the Sixers are in deep trouble. I'll talk about that next inning. And Mundo Sosa leads things off against the lefty Chris Sale, who winds and fires and swinging a foul to the backstop in the counts on one. Lakers and Nets will go later tonight. A 1-1 to Sosa, who is 0-for-1 on the afternoon. Wine in the 0-1 pitch. High and tight, and the count's even 1-1. One one. Tomorrow, I got LSU and Iowa on Snowman Multimedia. We'll start the party at 6.30. With the pregame show, the tip is at 7. The wine in the 1-1 pitch, swing and a miss, and the count's 1-2. And, and Chris Sale is cruising right along. He's retired nine in a row since the second inning. Next one, foul out of play. And the count stays where it is at one and two. That was a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. A little bit of trivia coming your way. Top of the next inning. From the line, here's the one-two pitch. Slash foul out of play to the right. We'll do it again. Seriously, Larry says, this team looks unprepared. Gee, I thought I was the only one with that vibe. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button on Play by Play with JJ, as well as Snowman Multimedia. We appreciate you for your support. One, two on the way. A swing and a high pop foul out of play, and we'll do it again. Activity now in the Bill, uh, Phillies bullpen as Jeff Hoffman, the right-hander, gets loose. And it's very likely he'll it's very likely he'll come in in the sixth. Next one, swinging a high fly ball into right. Coming in is Acuna. That drops for a base hit. So Amunda Sosa gets the fourth hit of the afternoon. Only seven hits total between the teams. I agree I agree and contrast with the good playoff, the Braves. It looks worse. So leadoff man on for only the third time. The first time it happened, Schwarber was trotting the bases. Christian Pash steps in. He's 0 for 1, struck out in the second. He bats here in the fifth with a runner aboard and nobody out. It would behoove the Phillies to try to get the lead. And I got the same feeling, J.J. Ranger Suarez is done for the afternoon. He threw 80-plus pitches. The pitch on the way is a ball outside as pass showed bunt pulled back and the count's 1-0. Why? He's been sharp since the second batter. I'll give, you a, I'll give you a guess as to why. Pitch count. We talked about it earlier with analytics. If Suarez is going good, I say let him keep going. 1-0, low and inside. And the count's now 2-0. Feel free to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so that way you'll know when JJ releases any type of content and goes live when he does tonight, that he will do tonight, at 6 o'clock for the Raptors and the Philadelphia 76ers. And that's going to be a fun one. The 2-0 pitch, a fastball strike, and it's 2-1 and one to Christian Posh. Johan Rojas would be next. Kyle Schwarber in the hole. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Atlanta 3, Philadelphia 1. Phillies have four hits. Atlanta has three. Two and one the count. The kick and the pitch. They check it first. No swing. It's three and one. The Phillies have only had two runners on once today, and that came in the second inning with a walk and a single and was unable to do anything with it. A fly out and two strikeouts ended the inning. 3-1 pitch. Ball four. That'll put two runners aboard. And that's how the second inning, bottom of the second inning began. 
Saw this in a game last year where I was sitting in for J.J. against uh, Shohei Otani and the Angels, and it looked like Otani was in complete control. But unable to do anything, un unable to keep that control. Here's the ninth place hitter in Johan Rojas. who struck out in the second inning. Phillies have left two runners aboard. They came back in the second. They have two on right now. Mitch Kofsky in the building. What's up, Mitch? Rojas is ready. Shows bun against sale, and it hit him. Did it hit him? They're going to check it first. As that curveball came all the way in, and did it hit Rojas? It most certainly did. So now the bases are loaded. It would be as they as they check. It did hit him. It hit him on the inside leg. Ask me in June. Mitch Kofke says, "How's it going, Larry?" Larry says, "Ask me in June when the Phils start playing." As they continue to take a look at uh, Rojas, leadoff hitter Kyle Schwarper will be next, who's one and who's one for two on the afternoon, and that one was a big one, a home run back in the first. Rojas is slow, walking it to first base. He showed bunt, pulled back, and got nicked on the leg. And they had their chat with Chris Sale. Tigers and White Sox are underway. White Sox lead one nothing. They were in the bottom of the third. They dropped a heartbreaker yesterday, seven to six in ten innings. As Rojas makes his way to first. And it looks like he's bouncing looks like he's bouncing around. And he's gonna stay in. We got some scores for you. Yankees lead the Astros one nothing in the bottom of the third. Giants and Padres go later. Blue Jays lead the Tampa Bay Rays five to one. They're in the top of the fifth. Angels four, Orioles one. They're in the bottom of the fifth in Baltimore. Nats and Reds are tied at three. As Sale delivers to Schwarber, low and outside, ball one. And on a 1-0 pitch from Sale back in the first, Schwarber is blasting one out. Any kind of hit here would tie the game. And the 1-0 to Schwarber. It's a strike, and the count's even one and one. 80-mile-an-hour slider on that pitch. Marlins lead the Pirates 6-4. to four. They're in the top of the fifth. Brewers lead the Mets 2-1. to one. They're in the bottom of the fourth in Flushing Meadows. Royal 6, Twins nothing. The pitch to Swarber is grounded to second. Flip to second, one. Return to first. Double play. Two down. Run scores. Four, six, three on that double play. In comes Sosa on that ground out. Johan Rojas is erased. The tying run in Christian Pash is now at third. And there are two down in the inning. And Schwarber had to reach out to make contact with that. So the tying run now sits at third after a brilliant double play. Brandon Marsh is standing by just in case he does have to go in for Rojas. Here's the pitch to Turner. Slash foul out of play to the right. Pache. Pache. Thank you, Larry. Christian Pache. Christian Pache. Okay. So Philadelphia gets a run. It's 3-2. to two. Here in the bottom of the fifth. Thank you, Larry, for that pronunciation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Turner waits, and so does Sale. Next one, swing and a miss. 
And the count's 0 2 to Trey Turner, who is 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Christian Pache. Christian Pache. I love when the folks in the, in the chat help me. I really do. Friday, it's the women's final four. We'll have that live on Snowman Multimedia. And depending on what JJ does, may have it here too. Next one's a high and tight fastball. The count's one and two. Tying run at third, two down in the fifth. Sale has thrown 75 pitches, 19 this inning. He's been efficient in terms of number of pitches, but he wants to get out of this with only the one run scored. The pitch to Turner. A swing and a miss, and that's that. So he does get out of it and allows only the one run. One run, one hit, no errors, and one left. Philadelphia gets closer, but they trail 3-2. to two. Back with more after this. I got uh, my buddy Darian Hopkins on in the background. He's got Tennessee and Purdue. It's uh, Tennessee 32, Purdue 25. And I picked Purdue to not get to the Final Four. Three runs, three hits, no errors for Atlanta. Two runs, four hits, no errors for Philadelphia as we go to the sixth. And it is indeed a pitching change for the Philadelphia Phillies as Hoffman begins with a fastball high and tight to Ronald Acuna for ball one. So Suarez goes five, gives up three runs on three hits. And my trivia question for the day goes like this. Who was the only team in Major League Baseball history to turn two double plays in the same game? And it looks like South Carolina has sealed up their trip to the Final Four. Next one, swing and a bouncer foul on a splitter. And the count's even at one and one. Again, the trivia question. Who is the only team in Major League Baseball history to turn two double plays in the same game? One and one, the count to Acuna. The pitch on the way is smashed foul, third base side. And the count is now one and two. Three runs, three hits, no errors for Philadelphia. They've, for Atlanta, they've left three. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Phillies. They've left three. Next one, swing and a miss, and, the, and one down in the sixth. Well, we've been at this for an hour and a half, so the, the way they've sped up the game is pretty cool. Here's Ozzie Albies, who has two of the reasons Atlanta is in front, a two-run homer back in the first. He is one for two on the afternoon. He grounded to second. And he is homered. There's a slider outside for ball one. Lots of teams have done that. Uh Uh-uh. 
Only one team has turned two double plays in the same game. Tell me who that team is. That's your trivia question. Next one is a breaking ball, is a splitter, I beg your pardon, outside. And the count's even one and one. Albies one for two. He got the scoring started. Next one, a swing and a pop up foul. And that'll get out of play. Counts now two and one. One out, nobody on, top of the sixth. Larry, I mean, I said the question right. Name the only team to turn two triple plays in the same game. I may have worded it wrong. So I'll say the question again after this pitch. The 2-1, fastball wide, 3-1. and one. Name the only team to turn two triple plays in the same game. Jeff Hoffman in his ninth year, 31 years old, out of Latham, New York. The 3-1. Swing and a foul, and it's three and two, and I did say double play. Larry, thank you for catching that. Let me restate the trivia question. How Name the only team to turn two triple plays in the same game. I didn't realize I said double plays. Thank you for catching that, Larry. Three and two, one out, top of the sixth inning. First pitch was thrown at 136 Eastern time. A pop-up, third base side, running as Sosa, has room in foul territory, makes the one-handed catch, two down in the inning. So Ranger Suarez goes five, gives up three runs on three hits. He walked one, that came in the first. And finished with seven strikeouts. I didn't realize I said the question wrong, and Larry, eagle-eared Larry, was able to catch that, and I appreciate that so much. With two out, the pitch, swing and a miss, and the count's on one to Austin Riley. Here's the question again. Who is the only team in Major League history to turn two triple plays in the same game? Only one team has done it. I didn't realize I said double plays before. Lots of people have, lots of teams have done that. Next one, high, and the count's even one and one. But only one team has turned two triple plays in the same game. And South Carolina, congratulations to Dawn Staley and the bunch are headed to Cleveland for the Final Four next weekend. And we'll have it live on Snowman Multimedia. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss, and the count's 1-2. and two. Jeff Hoffman, the ninth-year veteran, trying to... Seriously, Larry says Red Sox. No, that's not them. I'll give you the answer at the bottom of the inning. One and two, the count. The kick and the pitch. Fastball, strike three, called inning over. So Jeff Hoffman comes in, gets two strikeouts, and sets the Braves down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Phillies with some work to do. They trail three to two. We'll be back.
right, time for the answer to our trivia question. And I didn't realize, I'll say it once again, I didn't realize I said it wrong the first time. Seriously, Larry was able to catch it, and now I can say the correct question and the answer. I'll do it after this pitch. As Sale is still going strong. As Matt Ol Matt Olson, dog on it. I turned it over and I didn't even look at it. It's Alec Bohm who's at the plate. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And he's down 0 1 here. He had 20 homers last year with 97 driven in. Chris Sale is still going. Next one. Popped up foul on the count, so and two. Name the only team in Major League Baseball history to turn not one, but two triple plays in the same game. The year was 1990. The answer is the Minnesota Twins. And Larry was so close because it happened against the Red Sox. July 17, 1990. Next one. Low and outside, it's one and two. You know the ironic thing about that game where the Twins turned two triple plays? One in the fourth, one in the eighth. And the Twins lost that game one to nothing. <laughs> Go figure. The one two wide with a fastball, and the count's even two and two. Altuve has tied the Yankees at one apiece. South Carolina is going back to the Final Four in women's basketball. We'll have live coverage of that next Friday. Here's a swing and a bouncer. Base hit up the middle into center field. Alec Bohm is now one for three. And that's the fifth hit now for Philadelphia. And the tying run is aboard. So congratulations to Dawn Staley and South Carolina. The Gamecocks were now 36-0 and on the year. And they will head to Cleveland. And the final four. JT Riamuto to the plate. First one is a strike, and the count's on one. Seriously, Larry Astros, Larry Durker pitched a no hitter and lost. Actually, the pitcher I remember doing that as Joe Jimenez is up for Atlanta was Andy Hawkins from the New York Yankees. That also was in 1990. Give you more about that in a minute. The 0 1 pitch. Swing at a high fly ball into deep left field. Going, going, gone. Up against the wall and caught. I nearly said gone before it was gone. Up against the wall as JT Riamuto flies out to the deepest part of left field. Oh, man. A couple of warm biscuits for breakfast, and Philadelphia would have the lead. Instead, Riamuto is now 0 for 3. He flew out to, he's flown out to left, and there's one out. In the sixth. Doggone it, I nearly committed a broadcasting error. That looked like it was going to leave the yard, but Adam Duvall was up against the wall, and he made the catch. Everybody was ready to celebrate, too. Everybody was ready to celebrate, and Chris Sale is done for the afternoon. So we got a pitching change. The break is a minute and five. We'll tell you the new pitcher after this.
All right, bottom of the sixth inning. Joe Jimenez is on to pitch. He'll face Nick Castellanos to start things out in the sixth as Jimenez delivers a fastball strike in the count zone one. So Sale goes five in the third, struck out seven, walked uh, walked one, gave up five hits, two runs, all earned, walked two, I beg your pardon, struck out seven. Next one, swinging a drive in the deep left field, and, Matt, and Adam Duvall is right there to make the backhanded catch, two down to the inning. So a leadoff hit by Alec Bohm. Rhea Muto flew, flew, out, flew out to the deepest part of left field, and Nick Castellanos with a sinking line drive to left. Last season, Jimenez appeared in 59 games. He was 0-3 on the year. Two out, one on. And again, the Phillies in th- threatening to leave another runner on base. Here's a swing and a bouncer pass Jimenez to third. Up with it. The toss to first is in time. The inning is over, and that will take care of that. And I put everything in the wrong box. Oops. Well, that doesn't ruin my scoreboard. Thank the Lord for that. So I can do that. I can cross this out, and I can go to a break. We're done with six. Atlanta three, Philadelphia two. We'll be back. Here we go to the top of the seventh inning as the Braves lead Philadelphia by a count of three to two. Three runs, four hits, no errors for the Braves. Two runs, five hits, no errors for the Philadelphia Phillies. Yolando Andino Vega says, love this commentator. Have listened to others, but the yelling and screaming hurts my ears. And we have another pitching change. Great job, sir. First time listener. Phillies need to get it together. Why, thank you for all the compliments as Strom is now pitching for Philadelphia. Lefty on lefty as Matt Olson stands at the plate. And the pitch is a strike, and the count's 0-2. Matt Strom has appeared in 56 games last year with a 9-5 and record, 87 two-thirds innings pitch, walked 21, struck out 108, allowed 11 home runs. What's wrong with my Philly, Snow, says R.C.? Well, it's pretty simple. They're not hitting with runners in scoring possession. Strike three called, one out in the seven. <clears throat> Atlanta got started early with the two-run homer in the first, and they've made it stand up thanks to the pitching of Chris Sale. We were in the top of the seventh inning. Three to two in favor of the Atlanta Braves as they look for the sweep and keep Philadelphia winless. We'll keep you up to date with all the scores. We'll do a scoreboard update when we close up shop here later on tonight diary of a mad snowman will make it stick will uh make the uh new chapter will debut is a fastball inside to marcelo zuna for ball one he's grounded out to shortstop twice strom comes set kicks fires swing and a miss and the count's even one and one 
Red Sox and Mariners set to go at the top of the hour. Rangers trail the Cubs 3-2. to two. The world champions try to send the Cubs home with an 0-3 record, and I hope they do. Subscribe to both channels, folks, if you're tuning in for the first time. Play-by-play -play with JJ is the name of the game. Next one, swing it a smash. Base hit in the left field. That is their fifth hit. And in the middle of the screen, you'll see the IDs where you can subscribe to both channels and help contribute financially to both channels as we look to make everything grow. The play of the game so far is Castellanos, who appeared out trying to stretch a single into a double. But it uh, appeared that he was safe, and they didn't challenge it. The pitch on the way is a strike on the inside corner to Adam Duvall in the count zone one. Duvall has made a difference in the game. They're in the bottom of the fourth at Kauffman Stadium, one of the stadiums I have visited, and the Royals lead the Twins 10 to nothing as they look for their first win of the year. Brewers lead the Mets 3-1. They're in the bottom of the fifth in New York. Next one, way outside. The count's even 1-1. One one. They're in the bottom of the sixth in Cincinnati as the Reds and the Nationals are tied three apiece. The Fish lead the Pirates 6-4. to four. They're at the end of the sixth inning. Blue Jays lead the Rays 7-1. to one. Orioles lead the uh, Trail the Angels 4-1. to one. Next one, curveball strike in the counts 1-2. and two. Cardinals and Dodgers on Sunday Night Baseball later. Giants and Padres at the top of the hour. Yankees lead the Astros 2-1 to one as they look for a four-game sweep. And the Tigers and White Sox are tied one apiece. They're at the end of four on the south side. I got three favorite baseball teams, says RC. Tell me who they are. Next one, strike called, strike three called. Two down to the inning with a fastball right down the middle. And Mike Strom is doing his job. RC, who are your three favorite baseball teams? A lot of strikeouts between both teams today. So with two down, here's Michael Harris, who was 0 for 2 on the afternoon. We're in the top of the seventh. 3 2 Atlanta. First one, way outside, ball one. Activity now is Aaron Bummer, former White Sox pitcher, now warming up in the Atlanta bullpen. One and oh, the count. The kick and the pitch is a strike with a fastball, and the count's even one and one. Thompson loaded the lineup with righties and got two runs in six innings. Mm hmm. This is where I go with gut feeling and not and not analytics. Next one, foul out of play, and the count's one and two. Who are you guys' favorite teams or the teams that you follow in Major League Baseball? Y'all know mine. You've seen me with the hat on all the time. It's the White Sox. I'm a native Southsider of Ch I'm a native Chicago Southsider. My dad and my granddad got me into baseball. Texas is up on North Carolina State 4 0. They're early in the first. Next one, way inside, and the count's even 2 and 2. Tried to come at him with a fastball and didn't put enough on it. So there might be a fastball coming right on the edge of the plate. That's how he worked. That's how Strom has worked lefties from the times that I've watched him. 2 and 2 from the set. The kick in the 2 2 right there, and it's grounded to second. Merrifield up with it. Toss to first is in time. Inning is over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. That's the first base runner that Atlanta has left all day. Time to stretch in Philadelphia and time to stretch here in the booth. Atlanta 3, Philadelphia 2. Back after this.
To the bottom of the seventh inning we go. Braves three runs, four hits, no errors. They've left one. Phillies two runs, five hits, no errors. They've left four. And that is the difference in the ball game. Four runners left on base. They got two on with nobody out in the second, the Phillies did. They got two on with nobody out in the fifth and was able only to push a run across. The other run came in the bottom of the first when Schwarber took the second pitch he saw from Chris Sale and blasted it out of here. I like how this looks. I like how this looks. All right, we head to the bottom of the seventh, and Amundo Sosa will lead things off. As we start the bottom of the seventh inning, as Jimenez comes home with a fastball high for ball one. Now there's a righty. Do you pinch hit? Now that there's a righty, do you pinch hit all of your lefties? Yes. Bryson Sod is now pinch inning for Sosa to lead things off in the seventh. A breaking ball inside, and a swing is called, and the count's even one and one. So Sosa finishes the day one for two with a run scored. Next one to start is a breaking ball outside. And the count's now even. The count's now two and one, I beg your pardon. Sir Anthony Dominguez, the righty, warms up in the Philadelphia bullpen. There's a fastball outside, and it's three and one. Phillies have gotten a leadoff runner on base twice. Once in the first with Schwarber's home run, and once in the fifth with uh, Imundo Sosa's double. A single, I beg your pardon. Next one. Swinging a drive into deep right field. Starts in back track wall. Foul. Ah, uh, that was close. That was close. And it looked like uh, Stott got the high fastball, but unable to keep it fair. As legendary Hulk Harrelson said once upon a time, right size, wrong shape. Next one, breaking ball high, ball four, and the leadoff runner aboard for the third time. So Stott is on with a walk. T uh, the Tigers have taken the lead on the south side in Chicago, two to one, as they bat in the fifth. Texas leads North Carolina State early as they seek their first Final Four since 2003. And I believe we're going to have another pitching change as Brandon Marsh was announced. He'll head back to the dugout, and I believe the Phillies will... Bring another hitter. We'll sort it all out when you all get back in 65 seconds as we have another call to the bullpen.
All right, we're in the bottom of the seventh inning. There's a runner aboard with nobody out as Bryson Stott drew a walk, and Brandon Marsh will come on to hit for Christian Pache. Atlanta three, Philadelphia two. Marsh will pinch it for Pache with a runner on and nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh and every Philly fan in Citizens Bank Park standing and applauding. Here's the pitch. It's a strike and the count's on one as Aaron Bummer is now on to pitch. He takes over for Jimenez who took over for sale. We'll have a post game after this and wrap it all up and get you ready for Raptors Sixers here on Play by Play with JJ. That comes your way at six. Next one, sidearm fastball outside. Counts even one and one. And this week we're going to be busy. As Friday we'll have the Women's Final Four and then Sunday the Women's National Championship. And it'll be exclusively on the Snowman Multimedia YouTube channel. One and one the count. The kick and the pitch is a ball and it's two and one. Two balls, one strike. Nobody out. Bryson Stott on at first with a walk. I got an opinion question for you guys. We'll do that in a minute. Toss to first, Stott's back safely. Mr. Manserated God, uh, JJ really quit after the Phil's been pounded all weekend. No, he has a he has two games today, and he asked me to sit in for him, which I'm happy to do. Two and one the count. The kick and the pitch is a strike, and the count's two and two. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Brandon Marsh at the plate, lefty versus lefty. Aaron Bummer is on. Aaron, Aaron Bummer is on to pitch. Stott leads away from first. And the 2-2 two -two to Marsh, swing and a miss, and there's one out in the seventh. Again, unable to produce with runners on base. That's been Philadelphia's bugaboo. They've left four today. So Marsh strikes out for the first out of the seventh inning. Johan Rojas is 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in the fifth. And they loaded the bases and only got one run. Here's the pitch. It's a strike and the count's on one. The Phillies loaded the bases in the fifth with nobody out. A double play and a strikeout only got him one run. And Schwarber hit into that double play and drove in. He's driven in both runs today. There's a fastball strike on the corner, and the count's 0 2. Aaron Bummer, former White Sox pitcher and prospect, on for the Philadelphia Phillies, taking the place of right hander Jimenez, who stood in, who came on for Chris Sale. 0 2 the count, and time is called. Mavericks and Rockets will go to later tonight in the NBA at uh, 7 p.m. Bulls and Timberwolves, same time. Spurs and Warriors, same time. Down in Texas. And time is called as... Johan Rojas steps out. Leadoff man Schwarber would be next. The 0-2. A swing and a bouncer to short. Second one. Return to first. Two. A double play. And the inning is over. So Rojas bounces out. Four, six, three. Second double play turned by the Atlanta Braves. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We are through seven. It's Atlanta three and Philadelphia two. We got a situation 
in Philadelphia as they're looking on the replay. Rojas remains at first. He feels that he beat out the relay throw. Stott is retired. There's two out in the inning. You got the ball has to be in the glove and you got to squeeze it. And he did, and Olsen did not. The worst case scenario, as it as it looks, it would be a tie, and the tie would go to the runner, and the inning would continue. Nope, the inning is not going to continue. S- yes, it will. Safe at first. So Rojas is on with a fielder's choice. Let's change that in our scorebook. FC for fielder's choice, and Kyle Schwarber will now head to the plate. So now there's two out in the inning. So instead of the double play, change that to a fielder's choice for Johan Rojas. Stott is erased at second. 6-4 on that force out. All right, so let's correct our scoring here. What was originally called a double play is now a force out allowing Rojas to reach Stott is erased at second on the force out, four, uh, six four. I said four six, six four on the force out. And as it's scheduled, Kyle Schwarber will head to the plate. So once again, instead of an inning inning double play, the inning continues, and Kyle Schwarber will head to the plate. Schwarber's really found a home in Philadelphia. He has a home run today. He is one for three. And he's bounced into a double play. Time is called. And do we have a pitch clock violation? No. Schwarber's ready to stand in. Two out, one on here in the bottom of the seventh inning. That's a third replay we've had a look at today. The pitch to Schwarber is a line drive into center field and down for a base hit. Rojas to second. Schwarber is now two for four on the day. Sixth hit for Philadelphia. So that key call allowed the inning to continue. And now the tying run stands at second base with Trey Turner at the plate. And the fans are getting up in Philadelphia. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and the count's on one. First hit of the inning, sixth hit of the day for Philadelphia. They trail 3-2 to two here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Hardcore for all says, make it happen, boys. Let's see if they can. They're done with one in Portland, and North Carolina State leads Texas 19-14 to in a women's Elite Eight. From the set, the 0-1 to Turner. A swing and a bouncer foul, and the count's 0-2. to the count with... Two down and two on here in the seventh inning. The 0-2 to Turner. Swing a smash. Base hit in the right. That'll tie it up. Schwarber heads to third. And we are tied at three apiece. So that big call at first allowed the inning to continue. Turner smashes a base hit. Second hit of the inning. Schwarber to third. And we're tied 3-3. And now with runners at the corners, Alec Bohm to the plate. So that review, which allowed the inning to continue on a correct call. And the Phillies have tied this game at three apiece. Two hits in the inning, a run home. And Alec Bohm to the plate. 
It's inside for ball one. Big, big call at first, and it was a correct call. And that allowed the inning to continue. Alec Bohm is one for three. He singled last inning. 1-0 to Bohm is inside, 2-0. And Trey Turner just swiped second base, so now two in scoring position. Chance for Philadelphia to get the lead. And boy, you would love that. 2-0 pitch. Inside, 3-0. and Eh, the heck with it. I messed up my scorebook, but I'll keep up with it. Because I put at-bats in, in the wrong box. 3-3 three, three tie in the seventh. The next one is a strike, and it's 3-1 and one to Alec Bohm, who is one for three, singled in the sixth inning. Are they going to put him on? Like that unintentional, intentional walk? The 3-1 pitch is a strike, and the count's full 3-2. and two. So Bohm steps out of the batter's box as that sweeper just caught the low corner. Three and two, two out, two on. Bottom of the seventh inning and a 3-3 tie. The Phillies have finally caught the Braves. And time is called at the plate. Three apiece, bottom of the seventh inning. Three balls, two strikes to Alec Bohm. The payoff pitch. A swing and a drive in the left field. Duvall coming on, and he did not get it. That'll clear the bases. Two runs are home. Bohm drives in. Both runners with a two-run single, and the Phillies have gotten three in the seventh, and they lead five to three. A three-run seven for Philadelphia. And the sellout crowd has seen the Phillies wake up. And the Phillies have their first lead of the day, and that was a trap all the way, and Duvall couldn't come up with it. Now up to the plate comes JT Riamuto, who just missed a home run in the sixth inning. Here's a pitch. Swinging a bouncing ball. Base hit in the left field. And here they come. Four consecutive hits for the Phillies. And that will constitute a pitching change. I believe this will be a pitching change. Let's make sure. Aaron Bummer's wondering what is going on. The wheels have fallen off. There is no activity in the Atlanta bullpen. A two-out hit. Am I dreaming? Nope. In fact, you're not dreaming twice over. Two two-out hits. Philadelphia five, Atlanta three on the strength of a three-run seventh. And the biggest hit of the inning is a two-run single from Alec Bohm. Nick Castellanos to the plate. Bohm at second, Rio Muto at first. Bottom of the seventh inning. All three runs this inning have come with two out. Nick Castellanos looking for his second hit of the ball game, and he bounces one to short. Albies will go the short way to second, and that will take care of that. But the Phillies get three on four hits, no errors, and they leave two. Want to be sure I got all that right. Boy, is this game flipped upside down. Philadelphia five, Atlanta three. We go to the eighth after this.
To the top of the eighth inning, Philadelphia five, Atlanta three. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for Philadelphia. Three runs, four hits, no errors for the Atlanta Braves. Brandon Marsh is now on. And so is Sir Anthony Dominguez, the hard-throwing right-hander, appeared in 57 games last year. We'll give you all the stats, facts, and figures and get you updated with some scores when we conclude this afternoon. Arcia, Trump, and Acuna, the scheduled hitters for the Atlanta Braves. As we go to the top of the eighth inning, Orlando Arcia will start things off as Bryson Stott is now on for Emundo Sosa. Give me the Phillies defensive lineup in just a moment. Dominguez delivers. It's outside. Ball one. Nothing but heat from Dominguez. Arcia is 0 for 2. He is grounded out. He grounded out in the second. Struck out in the fifth. The 1-0. A swing and a foul out of play. The count's even 1-1. One and one. Here's a question of the day. Should the should Ranger Suarez have been taken out? Because it seemed like he was finding his groove even though he gave up three runs. One and one, the count. Dominguez sets at the chest, the kick of the pitch. A fastball strike on the outside corner at 96. And the count is now 0-2. I want to thank everybody that has tuned in to both channels, allowing me to bring this to you and allowing me to sit in for J.J. Here's the 1-2. Swing and a miss. And there's one out in the eighth. Phillies pitches have struck out 10 today. And that will take care of Orlando Arcia, who was struck out twice. And he was reaching for that fastball on the outside corner. Six o'clock tonight, J.J. is in the hot seat as the, Rain- as the Raptors and the Philadelphia 76ers will do battle from north of the border. And, J.J., if you're still tuning in, I want to be sure I got that right. I'm going to finish a little housework, and then i got to prep for a big matchup tomorrow. Swing and a miss, and the count's on one as Jared Kellenick, former Seattle Mariners prospect, is pinch inning for Trump, and he'll catch in the eighth inning. 83 pitches for Suarez. Swing and a miss on a fastball, and the count's on two. And now North Carolina State leads Texas by 11. Speaking of North Carolina State, they played, I believe they played Duke tonight in the final Elite Eight match of the, of the game. Swinging a high pop foul out of play. Count stays where it is at 0-2. Somebody confirm that for me. I think it's North Carolina State and Duke today for a spot in the Final Four. And I'm pulling for North Carolina State. The ghost of Valvano shall live on. You heard it here. Dominguez's 0-2 pitch. Outside with a slider, and it's 1-2. and two. Baseball on Snowman Multimedia on Wednesday. 2 o'clock is the start time, as we'll have the Braves and the White Sox from the south side. 1-2 pitch. A swing and a foul to the backstop. We'll do it again. Trump whining, it's rigged. <laughs> no, people love to whine that and they don't have any proof. That's what I love about it. People do, just do not have any proof. One and two. One down in the eighth and the pitch on the way is outside with a changeup. That'll leave in the count at two and two. Keep throwing smoke, Sir Anthony. Keep throwing smoke. They're not ready for it. They're in the second quarter, North Carolina State 31, Texas 20 in women's basketball in the Elite Eight in Portland, Oregon. The 2-2 pitch, a swing and a foul, we'll do it again. Came at him with another slider. So what do you all think? Is he going to throw another slider or is he going to come at him with a fastball? I think he's going to come at him with a fastball. Only four hits for Atlanta today. The Phillies have nine, and they picked up four in the bottom of the seventh inning. As Dominguez is set at the chest, the kick and the 2-2 pitch, a swing and a high fly ball into left center field, going back at the track at the wall, and it's off the wall. Heading to second is Kellenick with a one-out double.
their third extra base hit today. We won't get fooled again. I love that song. And I got a confirmation. Duke NC State at 5.05. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate that update. I would do that one, but I'm not prepared. There's a fastball high and tight in the count 1-0. and I will be prepared for tomorrow. LSU, Purdue on top of uh, Tennessee by 5. Someone get me a score for that game, please. I didn't put it in the ticker. Shame on me. I wanted to keep up with the women's games since I'll have that tomorrow. Next one, high and tight, 2-0 and to Ronald Acuna. The fourth extra base hit of the day for Atlanta. Three doubles and a home run. The 2-0 pitch from Dominguez to Acuna. A swing and a pop-up foul out of play, and the count's 2-1. 46-41, Purdue. 1420 left in the second half, so, per- so Purdue has wiped, wop, uh, wiped out a five-point lead. A nine-point Tennessee lead, I beg your pardon. That was the score that I that was the score that I got. Next one, wide three and one, and just when you thought it was safe to get back in the water after the strikeout of a coon, of a Arcia, a double for Kellenick, and now Acuna sitting in the catbird seat at three and one. Next one popped up foul counts full three and two. Hard for all before the half they did. Thank you. Thank you very much. May have to find a way to adjust this ticker. What do y'all want me to put on the... When I sit in for JJ, what do y'all want me to put on the ticker? What sports do you want me to follow? You just want me to follow the current games that are going on? The payoff pitch. A swing and a miss. Two down in the eighth. Acuna went fishing for a fastball outside. Second strike out of the inning. I'm going to get some advice from you guys. Let me ask l- let me ask this cuz I see a lot of folks that do online play by play do this. The screen that they the 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 graphic they put in the middle of the screen like from ESPN and such. So should I include that? Hark for all is not particular cuz I I don't like putting that up there. There's a fastball on the inside corner for ball 1 to Ozzy Albies who is 1 for 3. He is fouled out to third, grounded to second, and homered in the first. And that got the scoring started. The 1 0 to Ozzy. Smash to first. Base hit in the right. That brings home Kellenick, and it's 5 to 4. So another two out hit for Atlanta. They're used to this. Third RBI of the day. For Ozzy Albies. William McKay says run hits runs, hits, and errors would be nice. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. Do y'all like it? This box that I have in the middle of the screen that shows the runners on base? Or do you want y'all want me to include the runs hit the, the hits and the errors? Because I want to get the ultimate setup for you fans, whether it be here on Play by Play with JJ or my channel, Snowman Multimedia. I want to do my best and the best for you guys and I would be remiss if I didn't give JJ a shout for allowing me for asking me to sit in for him and do this game for him agree with William runs hits and errors yeah I can do that I'll do that next time when I do the um, when I do the game on Wednesday when I do the Sox game on Wednesday against Atlanta I will have the runs hits and the errors And I got to keep to afternoon games because, well, the latest, I'm sticking with a rule of mine. The latest game I can start would be 7 o'clock. And that's because I got to, I want to get that finished at 9. The graphics are second to the commentary. Well, thank you. Austin Riley, now at the plate. The pitch, outside, ball one. Philadelphia 5, Atlanta 4. Atlanta has two hits in the inning, a single and a double. Ozzy Albies has driven in three of the four runs. J.J. has MOB. And it's too busy. Yeah. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and the count's even one and one. I have the NBA and NCAA women's basketball on this ticker. What I might do is just do a baseball ticker 
Would that be okay for you guys? One and one, the count. The kick and the pitch. A swing and a high fly ball into left. That's dropping fast, and it's down for a base hit. Headed to third is Albies, and the tying run stands 90 feet away as the Braves get their third hit of the inning. Harker for all says surely. Okay. But I want to... Um, I want to get the right atmosphere information wise and we got a pitching change so y'all let me know your thoughts in the comments we'll take a 65 second break and tell you the new pitcher after this So I made a couple of changes during the break. You see the baseball ticker at the bottom. And I think from now on, that is the sport I will concentrate on and the league that I'll, con that I'll concentrate on as far as my ticker goes. Don't want to overload it. Kansas City leads the Twins 11 to nothing in Kansas City. Astros and Yankees are now tied after six or three apiece. They're in the top of the eighth in Cincinnati, and the Nats have the bases loaded. They're in the top of the seventh on the south side, three, uh, two to one in favor of the Tigers. And the new pitcher delivers, and it's swung on and hit high into right. Castellanos is under it. He's got it, inning over. So Soto comes in, throws one pitch, and gets Atlanta out of a jam. Bottom of the eighth inning, Phillies five, Braves four. We'll be back.
I want to send a shout to one of my favorites of all time, Charles Faulkner, who is celebrating his 42nd birthday tomorrow. But he's online right now jamming to some music. A.J. Minter is now on to pitch as we start the bottom of the eighth inning as Whit Merrifield takes a ball. It's 1-0. We're at the two and a half. We are just about at the two and a half hour mark. The pitch on the way is a fastball inside. It's two and zero. That was the longest inning of the day. The Nats have grabbed the lead, four to three over Cincinnati in the Queen City. Two and zero the count. Mentor's pitch, a fastball strike, and it no, not a strike. I beg your pardon. They go to the bottom of the eighth in Tampa, and the Rays trail Toronto 9-1. to one. Next one, fastball strike, and it's 3-1. and one. Soto comes through. Yes, indeed, he did. A's and Guardians will go later in Oakland. In fact, they're getting ready to get underway in a couple of minutes. Pirates now lead the Marlins 7-6, to six, and that's smashed foul to the backstop. Under 10 to go. Purdue up by 6. Thank you. Keep the updates coming. They're in the top of the 7th in Texas, and the Yankees and the Astros are tied three apiece. The Yankees have always had the Astros number during the regular season. The payoff pitch. A swing and a high fly ball into left. Duval camps under it. He's got it. One out in the 8th. Not to say one out in the 7th. Jeez Louise. Mariners and Red Sox will go from the Emerald City in a couple of minutes. Padres and Giants from San Diego. They're set to go in a little bit. Bryson Staub walked in that key seventh inning rally. We're in the bottom of the eighth. It's 5-4 to four in favor of the Phillies. First one, strike call, and it's all in one. Brandon Marsh, who pinch hit, is due next. Top of the seventh in Royal Stadium, 11 nothing in favor of the Kansas City Royals at Kauffman Stadium. The wine in the 0-1 is a ball, and the count's even a one and one. That's the second one that was missed. Jeez. One ball, one strike. The stretch and pitch, swing and a miss, and the count's one and two. Next one's a fly ball to left, and Duvall camps under it. Two down in the inning. So two down in the inning, and Brandon Marsh will head to the plate. Lefty versus lefty as Mentor sets at the chest, kicks, fires. A swing and a miss, a foul out of play to the left, I beg your pardon. And the count's on one. On one, one, the count as Mentor sets at the chest. And the 0 1 pitch. A swing and a pop up foul out of play, and the count's 0 and 2. Going to the count, bottom of the eighth inning, 5-4, Philadelphia. Philly trying to salvage one of these games, just one. Brandon Marsh waits with two out and nobody on in the bottom of the eighth. And the 0-2 from Minner is low, and it's 1-2. and two. One ball, two strikes, two down. Bottom of the eighth inning. Oh, you a ton. We owe you a ton of scoreboard updates. 
And the pitch. Strike three called, inning over. So after a rally in the seventh as Brandon Marsh is now 0 for 2. Nothing across for Philadelphia in the bottom of the eighth. They've left four today. All right, we go to the money frame, the top of the ninth. It is Philadelphia five, Atlanta four. We'll come back. We'll come back after this. to the top of the ninth inning. It is the Phillies five and the Atlanta Braves four. Atlanta got two in the first, one in the fourth, and one in the eighth. Philadelphia one in the first, one in the fifth, three in the seventh. They've out hit the Braves nine to seven. Ozuna, Duvall, and Harris scheduled to hit as the Phillies bring on their closer, Jose Alvarado. The pitch, strike on the inside corner. The count's on one. Phillies trying to salvage one of this four-game set. Now I know how to do the, 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 the scoreboard. Now I know how to do the scoreboard. The 0-1, fouled, and, that's 0 -2, and that count's now 0-2. They're going to the bottom of the ninth in Florida. Pirates lead 7-6 over the Florida Marlins. Alvarado appeared in 42 games. 10 saves and 12 opportunities. 40,000 plus in Philadelphia. Next one. Swing and a miss. One out in the ninth. The Braves have left three runners aboard today, three runners on today, and they have come in the last two innings. He threw that at 96, and it just fell off the table. Adam Duvall is now Adam Duvall, one for three, a single in the fourth. And the pitch is a strike on the inside corner, and the count's on one. Uh, uh, Adam Duvall didn't like that, said, was it inside? Umpire says, yes. And Duvall says, all right. It's on. And I mean that in a good way. The 0-1 pitch inside with a fastball. And the count's even to one and one. Matter of fact, that was a cutter, not a fastball. Bottom of the seventh in Houston. The Astros looking for their first win of the year. Bottom of the eighth in Cincinnati. The Reds trail five to three. And the White Sox have tied up the Tigers on the south side at two apiece. Next one is a strike, and it's 0-2. And, and Duvall has to look away, and, go, and he went, what? Rangers and Cubs are tied at five in the home of the world champion Rangers. And here come the fans again, some sporting the old jersey, some sporting the new ones. One-two pitch, low and inside with a cutter at 94. And the count's now even at two and two. Alvarado throwing smoke. Yeah, he's throwing a lot of smoke. The two-two pitch, a swing and a high pop-up out of play. Count remains where it is at one and two. Oh my goodness. He... 
One out, nobody on, top of the ninth inning. Here's the 2-2. Low and inside, tried to get him to fish. Fish weren't biting. And the count's full, 3-2. and two. Fans are, like, bouncing up and down, going, let's get another strikeout. Three balls, two strikes. One down, top of the ninth inning. And the pitch on the way. A swing and a high fly ball, or a pop-up, I should say, on the infield. Out to the grass is Bryson Stott. He's got it, just shy of second base. Two down to the inning. And the Braves are down to their last out. So with two down, here is Michael Harris to face the left, the hard-throwing lefty, Jose Alvarado, as he tries to wrap it up. The pitch to Harris. Swing and a miss, and the count's on one. One more out to go. Alvarado throwing hardcore smoke. That he is. Get her done, Phils. Absolutely. One out to go. And the 0-1 uh, is low. One ball, one strike. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for Philadelphia. Four runs, seven hits, no errors for Atlanta. The 1-1 pitch to Harris. A swing and a shot to right. Castellanos got it, and, and that's your game. Michael Harris lines out to Nick Castellanos, and the Philadelphia Phillies pick up a win in the final game of this weekend series to start the season. Your final score is Atlanta 5 and Philadelphia is Philadelphia 5 and Atlanta 4. Strom gets the win, 1 and 0 on the year. Aaron Bummer gets the loss, he's 0 and 1. Alvarado with his first save of the year and a 3-run 7th did the deed for the Philadelphia Phillies from 3-1 down to 5-3, 3 to 2 down and 5 to 5-3 uh, ahead. Jose Alvar Jose Alvarado picks up the save. The first pitch of this afternoon's game came at 1.36 p.m. Eastern time. The Phillies' bullpen pitches four innings. They allow four hits, one run, no walks, and they struck out seven. What a job by the, what a job by the Phillies' bullpen, man. What a job by the Phillies' bullpen. When it looked like Atlanta was ready to run away with it, the Phillies bullpen said, nope, we're not having it. Time of the game is two hours and 39 minutes, and in, it was played in front of 42,515 sold-out series at Citizens Bank Ballpark. Your final one more time, the Philadelphia Phillies 5 and the Atlanta Braves 4. I want to thank everyone for tuning in and allowing yours truly, Brian Snow, a.k.a. the Snowman, to bring this to you. In J.J. Stead, he will be on at 6 o'clock tonight on play-by-play -play with J.J. as the Toronto Raptors will host the Philadelphia 76ers as the Sixers look to stay in the playoff race. Thanks, everybody. I will talk to you all soon. In fact, I will talk to you all tomorrow on Snowman Multimedia as the LSU Tigers face off against the Iowa Hawkeyes. If you want to know more about that, subscribe to Snowman Multimedia, youtube.com slash snowmanmultimedia52. So long, everybody.